Hello, it's Jeremy here with Cisco Systems Technical Marketing within Enterprise Networks. Uh, today, just doing a, a brief demo here with the Catalyst 9300 uh, switching platform, uh, showing off the application hosting feature. Uh, specifically, we're going to be loading a Docker container um, that's pre-configured with uh, the Wireshark uh, packet capture utility, as well as it's configured for remote desktop so that we can RDP into it uh, and take the packet capture. So the use case here um, is where we have a branch office uh, and where the analyst wants to use the Wireshark GUI uh, that they're familiar with to capture the packets as well as to analyze them. So again, this is a remote branch office. So we're going over a WAN link where we don't want to um, send a large packet capture over that link to do the analysis. So there's basically five or six steps that we're going through uh, to make this possible. So we'll go through each one of these, uh, starting with the prerequisites, uh, what we need, I'll talk a little bit about the Docker container that we're using to make this happen. And then three and four, that's the configuration that we put onto the iOS XE device, the switch, uh, to configure the interface into the Docker container, and, and then as well as to configure the resources uh, that the container has access to. Uh, finally, uh, we'll talk about starting the container, so how we actually orchestrate that using the CLI. Um, and then the, you know, the best part is, the, or last here, number six is when we are, are gonna connect using remote desktop. Um, into the container that's running on the Cat9K switch uh, to access the Wireshark utility. So as far as prerequisites go, um, I laid them out, uh, the, the top four are listed here. So we do need a, Catal a Cisco Catalyst switch, 9300. It does need a SSD 120G or equivalent uh, USB storage module um, that you purchase from Cisco. Um, and then of course the software that's running on here is iOS XE 17.1. This is the latest uh, at the time of the release here. And then of course the licensing for this is the DNA Advantage license. Um, so I put a link to the uh, configuration guide so that has details about the features that we're gonna be working with today. So the Docker, uh, just a brief introduction overview to some of the Docker commands that we use to get this going. Uh, it's basically one single command now that we found which is this Docker save command. So we're gonna use uh, uh, Docker save uh, to use this existing Alpine uh, XFCE4 or XRDP um, Docker container. So that's uh, a Docker container based off Alpine Linux uh, that's using the XFCE4, that's the desktop environment. Uh, and then it also has the XRDP uh, software installed so that we can remote desktop into it. And then we're gonna save this, um, we're gonna pull it down from Docker Hub uh, and then we're gonna save it to a tar file. And that tar file, uh, we're gonna copy it over, we did copy it over uh, from our, just from our web server here to the USB flash one, that's the, the SSD 120, the 120 GB storage module on the 9300. So this is the Docker image that I'm using. It's uh, by uh, Daniel here, who's uh, one of the maintainers working on this software project. Um, <clears throat> so from Docker Hub, he posts this thing and, and as well as some instructions on how to run it. So we're just taking this off the shelf Docker container uh, that someone else has maintained uh, and built, and we're gonna just copy it and load it onto the Cat 9K and then run it. So the configuration that we need on the application hosting interface. Now, uh, if you're not familiar with this, um, I put a snippet of the, the show interface status here. So you can see that I have uh, port 13, port 14 um, with the access point and the uplink. And then I have this other port, this AP101 or application uh, gigabit ethernet uh, 101. Um, think of this like the, the physical port that's wired into your Docker container, except uh, the Docker container, of course, is not a, not a physical interface, it's a virtual interface. Um, so that, that AP101, that's the interface that connects to our Docker container. So this is the, the config that we put onto it. Basically, it's just a trunk, so it's going to allow all traffic uh, into the Docker container. And then this is the actual configuration that we put in for the container that we're going to turn on, the actual Docker container. So it's configured with two interfaces. Now, remember this Docker container is connected on a trunk. Um, so one of those interfaces is gonna be on uh, one VLAN, uh, VLAN 101, that's where our management's gonna be uh, on IP address 10.1.1.9. So when we remote desktop, we're gonna remote desktop into that IP address 10.1.1.9. That's ethernet zero or the, the guest interface zero on the Docker container. And then there's a second interface on that same Docker container that we call guest interface one. And it's configured in, in mirroring mode, uh, which is similar to what we would call a trunk mode uh, in a traditional port. So here uh, we have the configuration for the Docker container. And then on the bottom is the additional resources that we have granted for this Docker container. So 
um, we're basically saying all available resources on this Cat 9K switch, um, we're going to um, allow this Docker container to utilize. So just, just a note on the resources here, this is separate resources from the switching resources that are used for you know, regular iOS XE switching uh, and, and routing uh, type of processes. So uh, once we've started and once we've configured the interfaces in the feature, um, then we actually need to turn on the container, activate the container. So it's, it's a three-step process um, that uh, is called through this app hosting shell. Um, where we say install first, and install is when we unpack that tar file that we copied over, the Docker contents. Um, the second step is to activate it, and this is when we uh, turn those files into a container. And then uh, the third step is to start, and that's the equivalent of, uh, of pushing the power button um, on the device, on a physical device. Um, so that's, a three, that's the three-step process to, to turn on the container. Um, I did the show app hosting list here in the screenshot, so we can see that uh, it's in a running state um, after we started it. And then we did a ping and we can actually see that um, the ping is going, uh, is, is responsive. So this is the slide that talks about the um, application hosting orchestration uh, within, this, within this CLI. So there's a couple steps um, to take. So the, the first one that we talked about, which is configuring the interface and then configuring the feature. Um, but before you do that, the IOX framework needs to be installed. So IOX is a framework that uh, is responsible for launching and maintaining the Docker containers within iOS XE. So we need to do an IOX and then uh, basically follow the, work the workflow here to install, activate, start the container. Uh, and then we do have the option to connect to the console of that container, um, similar to connecting to the, the, the physical console on the device. And then finally, um, uh, step six here, which is when we remote desktop using the remote desktop connection in Windows um, to that 10.1.1.9 IP, that's the IP address of the Docker container. Uh, and then from there, we can launch um, Wireshark, we can launch the terminal and verify the IP address and you know, do other things uh, that are available within this Linux system here. So um, with that, let's move over to the, the demo system that we built up here for this. Okay, so here I am in the remote desktop environment. Now let me access the 9300 switch. Uh oh. So I'm just connecting uh, over Telnet from the Ubuntu host within the pod environment here. Let me just make the text a little bit larger. Okay, so let's verify uh, what's happening on this switch here. If we do a uh, show inventory, uh, we'll see that we have the SSD 120, the, S the uh, uh, USB storage module. And this is a 9300, this happens to be a 24 port switch. And if we do a show version, uh, this is running 17.1 again, this is the, the latest version. So let's check some of the configuration that we have in place here. Let's do a show run section app hosting. So here's the configuration that we have. Our app hosting app is gonna be called C9K Wireshark. Uh, and then it's gonna have one guest interface monitoring and then a second guest interface on as the management interface. Uh, it does have a default gateway out to the internet and then we gave it some extra resources. Let's take a look at the interface status. Again, we have these three interfaces on here and here's the AP101 interface. Um, that's connected, uh, it's a trunk, and again, this is the app hosting port. We can take a look at the running configuration on here. And again, this is just a really simple uh, trunk port. So if we do a show app hosting list, um, of course our app is in running, and then if we take a look at the IOX, the infrastructure that's running this, of course everything here is in running state as well. Um, this is probably one of the first steps to do uh, is to turn on IOX, and then we can uh, actually turn on the container. So um, let's, let's connect to this container that's running uh, in the environment here. So we have two ways of connecting. Uh, one is over the console from iOS XE, and then the other is through remote desktop. So let's just quickly go into remote desktop and just make sure that, the, uh, that it's uh, um, gonna let us log in here. So with this container, um, based off of the Docker Hub, is this Alpine Alpine for the login. 
Now, okay, that's great that we can log into this, but before we go any further, let's actually connect to that same uh, Docker container on the switch. So to do that, uh, we send the app hosting, app ID, uh, pardon me, app hosting, and then the command that we want, which is gonna be to connect the app ID, C9K Wireshark. And then we wanna connect uh, to the session. So here we are in the session. If I run an ID, we can see uh, the user. And then uh, if we take a look at all the processes, uh, we should see that uh, XFCE, the desktop environment uh, is running as well as the, uh, we should see remote desktop XRDP here somewhere as well. If we do an IPA, uh, it prints out the IP address for us. So if we can run uh, the traditional IF config and it prints us out 10.1.1.9 as well as the, the hardware address you know, ending in E086. So let's go back to the uh, remote desktop environment here. Um, let's close this, quit without saving. I had this open from earlier. So let me move the console window over. Basically, I just want to verify that uh, that we're on the right device, the right Docker container. And uh, again, I'll do that just with a uh, IF config. Uh, IF config. Uh, and again, we see that, that this is the IP 10.1.1.9, E0A6. That's the same. This is like definitely the right container. Let's open up Wireshark here. I think uh, we need to do it from the command line using uh, using like the sudo command. Let me just make this uh, full screen. Let's just check the history of what we ran, if we have it. Okay, so sudo Wireshark. So let's run that. Okay, so it's opened up Wireshark for us. And what we can do is go and capture the packet. So um, it lists the interfaces. Now, um, ETH0, that's where our management interface is. So let's capture on ETH1. Now, this is a trunk port, so it's gonna get uh, pretty much everything coming in um, over the trunk port, including our management traffic. And that's mostly what you see here on this traffic on port 3389. Um, but if we filter that out, we might see some other uh, traffic in here from some other devices. Um, that are going over the network. Um, one of the use cases that we had here was to um, to take PCAPs uh, and look specifically at the DHCP uh, data. So let let me start this PCAP up again here, uh, and we'll leave it running uh, for a little while here. We should see some traffic from some other devices uh, in the network, which I think is just going to be the uh, the access point. So here I'm gonna get out of the Docker container, go back to the switch. Yeah, so we're uh, monitoring the, uh, yeah, everything in here. And the management is on VLAN 101. Our AP is also on VLAN 101. So definitely uh, we should see the traffic in the remote desktop thing. Oh, and here we go. So uh, once I moved away, the, the um, oh, here's some more packets coming in. So the, the access point is sending some more um, DCP packets, which is uh, what we have this filter on here for, or we did. So here's all the boot P packets uh, that are coming in from this access point. So, you know, we can save this, uh, we can upload it over the network or transfer it or, uh, or do whatever the use case is uh, for their analysis is uh, from here. So that concludes the demo um, of using the CAT 9K, the Catalyst 9300 switch, uh, looking at the application hosting feature, looking at Docker um, to run a Docker container with Wireshark that we can remote desktop into to uh, do some uh, PCAPs and some analysis on.